Uh, good morning, everyone. It's really lovely to see you here at the garden today. My name is Ksenia, and um, I had a great opportunity to come here from Russia to do my PhD, as Sue said, uh, with Sue and Clay in the epigenetics group. Yeah, and now I've just, I've just finished and moved on to a slightly new area. So today I will be talking about um, how environment can change our epigenomes and whether those changes can be passed to the next generation. I will start off with, with the honeybees example. Honeybees have two female castes, queens and workers, and uh, they, they have, they're different in behavior and physiology. But so remarkably, these two different bees have the same DNA, the same genome, but yet look remarkably different. The reason behind it is that they have different epigenetic layers on top of the DNA, as well as uh, different composition of other epigenetic molecules which, keep, uh, which help keeping genes on or off. Those differences in the epigenomes arise from a different diet the bee is fed during early development. So female, female bees, fed, female larvae, fed uh, a nutrient-rich diet called a royal jelly, uh, they develop faster and produce queen bees. But female larvae fed a more diluted diet called a worker jelly, develop slower and produce worker bees. Um, basically, what we see here is that the diet can change the epigenomes and uh, modify development of an organism. And we also know that in humans, diet can change the epigenome. As well as, other as well as other environmental stresses, such as stress itself, exercise, or smoking. But the question here is whether any of those changes can be passed to the next generation. Generally, in mammals, when a, uh, a sperm, sorry, when the sperm from the father and egg from the mother fuse to produce a new organism, epigenetic layers get removed. In the, in the zygote, in the early embryo, and then get reestablished later in development. Such removal of epigenetic information in the early embryo facilitates the formation of a new organism from scratch and ensures that changes happen to, to the epigenomes of the parents during their lives are left behind. However, development of new techniques showed that uh, not all epigenetic layers are removed in the early embryo, and some of them are actually transmitted from either sperm or egg, uh, and they help development to proceed. However, if those inherited epigenetic uh, marks were modified in the parents due to smoking, stress, so on, they can be passed to the new, uh, to, the, to, the, to the baby, modify development of the embryo, and modify uh, uh, postnatal development, which might result in the predisposition to metabolic disorders, cardiovascular diseases, and even cancer. In mammals, the most profound example of, of parental diet influencing offspring development uh, were done in mice. So th those studies showed that fathers, fathers fed a high-fat or low-protein diet uh, have epigenetic changes in their sperm, which get transmitted to the embryo and all to development of the embryo. And when the, the babies are born, even under normal diet, they exhibit metabolic disorders such as glucose intolerance and insulin resistance. And another study in mice showed that even grandchildren are affected by the parental diet as well. Uh, in Humans, two most notable studies are the Dutch Hunger Winter Study and Holocaust Survivor Study. Children who were conceived during 1944-1945 famine in the Netherlands, they show uh, elevated risk of metabolic disorders, um, obesity and diabetes, and increase in cardiovascular diseases. And it has been found that uh, individuals who were conceived during famine had epigenetic changes to the gene which regulates growth and development before birth compared to, the, to their siblings who were not prenatally exposed to famine who were conceived later. 
Another study in uh, humans looked into the impacts of parental trauma, uh, of Holocaust trauma, uh, imposed on parents before the conception of their children. The adult offspring of Holocaust survivors had uh, higher incidence of anxiety disorders and depression. And it has been found, in terms of epigenetic changes, that offspring of Holocaust survivors had uh, epigenetic changes at the gene which regulates stress hormone levels compared to the Jewish cohort, control cohort of people uh, who, who, whose parents lived outside of Europe during the war and were not exposed to Holocaust trauma. But what is important to bear in mind here is that epigenetic changes in the offspring can be either truly inherited from the parents, which we call epigenetic inheritance, but those epigenetic changes can also arise from a direct exposure of the embryo uh, to environmental stresses while still in utero. Or those changes can be a result of parental care during upbringing. And it is not easy to differentiate in human studies and indicates that further research is needed to understand what underlies the, uh, what is the underlying mechanism of epigenetically associated diseases. So to summarize my talk, we know that epigenetic layers on our DNA are susceptible to environmental stresses. Uh, uh, but the majority of epigenetic information in mammals is removed in the embryo. However, some epigenetic signatures are transmitted from parents to their offspring, uh, helping embryonic development to proceed. But if those epigenetic signatures are altered by the parental environment, it can impair development of the offspring and increase the risk of several diseases. And that is why it is important to study how our epigenomes uh, are reprogrammed during early development and what epigenetic layers are transmitted from parents to their offspring and how they regulate early development and later postnatal development. Thank you.